Let me first distinguish between uh, DHL owner drivers versus DHL Express. This is really important. So you have two options when you sign up to be a DHL driver. So you can sign up as a courier, which offers more flexibility and the ability to set your own schedule. You can also sign up to work for DHL Express directly. Okay. So when you work for, a, if you work directly for DHL, you work the hours designated for your shifts. Okay. Yet the benefit packages, support of management, and exceptional work environment are reasons why a lot of people actually choose to work for DHL Express as an employee. Okay. And uh, but so you got to really think about what kind of uh, stuff you are actually looking for. Now, this show is about becoming a DHL carrier. So you basically are an independent contractor or you are an owner operator who actually uh, works with uh, DHL. You get paid per, you can, you get paid RPM. In other words, rate per mile, RPH, rate per hour, or RPC, rate per contract. Okay, this is what the show is about. And one thing you need to understand here is that you have to actually have a clear idea of what kind of a routes you want to focus on, what kind of geography, because DHL is, uh, they, they are more dominant overseas when it comes to international uh, shipping, but in the States, they are also present. They, are, they also cover a lot of uh, grounds. So you have to have a clear idea about what geographies you want to cover. And one thing I want to say here is that the very first step, very first step in becoming a DHL owner driver, AKA independent contractor, or working with DHL Express directly, the very first step you need to go. You need to go to the website, and uh, basically they actually have a they have a place where you can actually sign up. You have to first sign up, and when you sign up, then you provide all your info. Then basically at that point you can choose whether or not you want to be a DHL owner driver or a DHL Express driver. You mentioned that while signing up. So let me just quickly do give you a recap here. So a DHL owner driver sets your own, you, you set your own schedule and hours of delivery based on demand. You deliver packages in your own vehicle or a DHL truck or a cargo van or Sprinter van. You work close to home and can take other jobs because you set your schedule. And uh, owner drivers work as self-employed couriers with less room for, for advancement, but you're making more money anyway. And you have shorter routes based on your schedule. So DHL owner drivers or independent contractors or or uh, owner operators they are self-employed very important to mention that they're not hired by dhl they're not dhl employees you are independent you get your 1099 at the end of the year that's what it is so when we talk if you are trying to become a dhl owner driver and earn well when close to $130,000 a year. And I know when we when we give when we give those numbers, we have some folks who will actually write in the comment section, "Yeah, this is not true. You know, you guys are lying, blah 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 blah." That's okay. You can you can say anything you want. We have proof. Those are numbers that our business clients are pulling every year, day in and day out. They just, you know, so 130 grand is not just uh, the maximum. People are making more than that. There are ways to make money driving for dhl so some of the things that you need to actually think about dhl driver etiquette very important your driver etiquette at dhl is really important so let me give you what would disqualify someone from being a dhl driver several things can disqualify someone from becoming a DHL driver so besides failing the background and drug screening you will be terminated or you will not get a, a job at all if you are caught using illicit drugs if felonies are, if you have uh, felonies in your background, no matter the age, if the DHL finds out that those are related to illegal drug use, you will most likely not be considered for the job. So very important. Moving violations on your driving record are grounds for disqualification. Okay, your driver's license must remain valid and meet driving privileges standards. Also, you cannot engage in any physical or verbal altercations, especially with customers. Okay. You must also commit, you must also not commit theft or any other criminal activities. And one thing, when we talk about DHL driver etiquette, appearance is very important, is another factor. You must be clean, in proper uniform, and conduct yourself appropriately as a company representative. Even if you are an independent contractor, you are still a company representative. So this is really important. So when we talk about your overall DHL driver, owner driver, delivery uh, job responsibilities. 
you, you deliver high quality products to DHL customers in a safe, courteous, and timely manner. You establish and maintain outstanding relationships with customers. You, re, you must make sure that you review and verify invoices and purchase requests to ensure accuracy. You actually inspect delivery vehicles and ensures the safety and security of the loading and unloading process. You contact customers to confirm delivery details. You determine the placement of merchandise. You follow safety and lifting protocols during deliveries and you conduct safety reviews and you maintain delivery logs and records. So all of those things are things you need to uh, do if you are the DHL owner driver. Now, how do you actually sign up for DHL? If you want to uh, drive for them, make money, you, you have to. So as I was telling you before, you have to go to actually to the website. So signing up to work as a DHL driver, as an owner driver, or directly for DHL Express is easy. And uh, so signing up to become a DHL owner driver is kind of similar to applying for a job at the company. Let me give you all the step-by-steps -step you need to follow here, okay? So it, it, what I'm trying to say, it, it is the same thing. You follow the same process as someone who wants to work for the company directly. You as an independent contractor, as an owner operator trying to make money on the side, you follow the same process. So you go to DHL.com. At the bottom of the page, under company information, there is a, 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 a jobs link. It can be a it can be a careers link. Clicking on that will take you to their actually to their jobs page. Okay, and you want to scroll down the page halfway, and you will see a section for job searches. Click on the find more, find out more tab. So you want to scroll down until you see join us click on that tab under the term in a front line row so this is where you have so you want to click the delivery drivers tab so you can choose either to be a delivery driver or a uh, dhl express driver or an owner driver it really depends so click on the delivery drivers tab to see information regarding the positions available and so you have to choose the delivery drivers if you don't see the uh the uh the DHL owner driver, just click on the delivery driver. You will actually mention the kind of position you're looking for while going through the rest of the application process. Not a problem. At the end, they have a, they have a box where they ask you to provide additional information for the uh, interviewer or the, review, the, the, the reviewer. So this is where you, you say specifically, listen, I don't want to be uh, an employee. I want to be a DHL driver, like owner driver. I want to be an owner driver. That's how they call owner operators or independent contractors working for the company. Okay. And you just mentioned that. And uh, one thing I need to say here is that just make sure that you actually, uh, you are on the lookout because they will contact you. They're really fast, by the way. And don't forget also to enter your location. Okay. You want to enter the location. That's what I said. You need to enter the geographies you want to cover. They are important. So yeah. Okay. The next thing you want to do here is you want to click on an open position. So basically you will see all kinds of positions and you normally you will see an owner driver and an owner driver is basically one of the standard uh, positions they have. They also have uh, DHL Express positions. They have DHL driver positions, but owner driver is a standard like they have the same standard description. And uh, so, it's the, so you want to click on that. Now, if you don't see the owner driver position, you can click on DHL driver position, but when you actually, uh, you fill out the information at the end, when they ask you to provide additional notes for the reviewer, you just say what I just said to you, which is, I don't, I don't want to be a DHL driver. I want to be an owner driver. You have to mention that, okay? And uh, so enter an email you use regularly. That way you will not miss any essential communications going forward. And you want to click continue. And now you want to fill out the online application. So when you fill out the application, they will ask you, DHL will ask you personal details, experience and education, business information. So information about your business. They'll have some uh, some information in the, in the questionnaire, for example. They'll ask you to have some additional attachments. They will ask you the legal structure of your business. In some cases, they will ask you your EIN, your employer identification number, if you have one. Okay. They'll also ask, also ask you, for instance, uh, 
when you were when you were formed that when you started doing business okay so once you have filled out all the information openly and honestly click submit now i was just telling you earlier that there is a box where they actually uh, ask you to provide additional information if you don't see that box you can click on you can actually put the the the, uh, the, the information about you being a dhl owner driver just put that information as an attachment as an additional attachment so that's kind of cool they'll see it anyway right so you so once you have actually done everything just make sure that you follow up because you want to check your email to see if there is any additional information needed for your application make sure to check your junk folder in case emails have been filtered into that box and it will also be a great idea to add the email address from the message sent to you by DHL to your contacts list. That way, you can sh you can be sure that all future correspondence makes it into your inbox. Now, I want to talk to you before I, I could I talk to you. I want to talk to you about uh, a few things about you know DUI or felony. By the way, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic where, where I'm talking to you about how to actually uh, become a DHL owner driver and earn close to $130,000 a year. Basically, this is an average. We have uh, business clients who make more. We have clients who make less, but this is an average. Also, your final salary, your final compensation will depend on your geography, on the roads that you are actually uh, on the loads that you are hauling, on the, uh, the roads, you, the, on the lanes you have. And, uh, and your vehicle also. So the question is, can you work for DHL if you have a DUI or a felony on your record? Well, the thing here is that it depends, but over, but generally you cannot. Because to work for DHL, you gotta have a clean driving record, okay? They, they have a very thorough, one of, the, one of the most thorough background checks in the industry. And they have been doing this for 20 years, more than 20 years, by the way. So that means what? It means that you cannot have a recent DUI, felony, or unresolved cases that impact the screening process. So some background checks only go back seven years, and many felonies are eligible to be expunged only after three years, after only three years, right? So whatever may be in your background, make sure that you are honest on your application. This is really important. If you're trying to be, if you're trying to become a DHL owner driver, you got to be really clear or, or even an employee for that matter. Make sure that you are really honest. Tell them up front. You want to tell them up front. A mark in your past will not necessarily disqualify you for the position, but they got to know. They have to know up front. And another question I want to say here, I want to quickly answer for you is what if you don't hear back from DHL after you have applied? Well, the first thing is to check your email's junk folder. I just said that. Sometimes email from DHL will be recognized as spam if your filters are set to do so. And if there is an email from the company in your junk folder, you can reach out to the DHL support team so they have a phone number, email, or social media. And email is the best way to communicate with them regarding employment, but it may take business, one business day or two for them to reply, okay? So this is important now. While you wait, for, you wait to speak to someone at the company about a specific position, you should continue to apply for other courier jobs listed on the on the site or you can just say you know what i'm not interested in any job i'm, I'm just going, going to wait but yeah you do as you wish now let's talk about salary here because you know i've just uh given you some numbers and uh again as i said before we know that uh, people would actually be talking about numbers. People love numbers. And they say, you know, you're lying. You're lying. I can't, you know, this is not possible, whatever. So the thing is, according to uh, Indeed, the income range for a DHL driver is from $18.65 to $72.20. $72.20. With an average salary per hour, of course, of $38.80. Okay. Now, the thing here is that you have to understand you make more depending on your, your geography, the route you are actually hauling, the loads you're hauling, the route you're driving, the cargo van or the sprinter van you have, the box truck you have, the kind of vehicle you have, and the opportunities. Obviously, somebody who is uh, like a cargo van driver who is uh, in uh, or a DHL owner driver who is in uh, LA is not making the same money as somebody who is in Teaneck, New Jersey. 
So you have to really think about that. You have to really pay attention to the geography when uh, when you actually uh, think about salary, okay? And one thing you need to understand here is that when we talk about salary, as a DHL owner driver, you you don't have any healthcare coverage. The company does not provide you with healthcare healthcare coverage. You don't have uh, you don't participate in their uh, retirement plans. You are on your own. So basically, you don't have time off, no, because you are an independent contractor. You're not a DHL driver. You're not a DHL uh, staff member. Okay, so it's really important to remember that when you actually set your price, because you need to set your price in such a way that you are constantly coming out coming out on top. Because you have to cover those those costs by yourself. The company is not paying for it. not paying them for you. Same thing applies for taxes, payroll taxes. You, as a self-employed, you have to pay your own payroll taxes among other taxes. Okay, so things like FICA, things like Social Security, things like uh, Medicare, those things you have to pay yourself. This is important to, to mention. And one thing I also want to say here is that when you have a conversation with uh, the interviewing team. Make sure that you are flexible in terms of salary. In other words, they're not going to give you a salary. They're not going to promise you a salary per year because you're not an employee. But you can negotiate three types of uh, of revenue, revenue basis with them, revenue models with them. So DHL can actually uh, agree to give you uh, to a, a, they can agree to a rate per mile. They can agree to a rate per hour, or they can agree to a rate per contract. You have to see which one works for you, RPC, RPM, or, or RPH. Now, the thing is that some, some locations will only favor RPH. Some locations will favor RPC or RPM, depending. On, so it's not like it, there is no sort of standard policy at the national level for, for all DHO managers to follow. No, it really depends on the, uh, the geography here. Okay, so but when you actually have that conversation, be aware of those, be aware of this trifecta, and you want to choose the one that works for you. Based on our experience, you make more money on the RPC model. If you if you agree on a rate per contract model, you make more money. But uh, see what's available, right? You you have to see what's available, and you have to see which kind of. Um, now the thing about rate per contract is that. It pays more, but it also has added responsibilities, right? But so you have to see what which what really matters to you in the long run as well. I want to quickly talk to you today, but before we close the conversation, I want to talk about the, what it's like to be a DHL delivery driver, what it's like to be a DHL uh, owner driver, for example. The thing is that there are significant advantages to being a courier or driver for DHL. Whether you're an in-house driver or outside driver, aka DHL owner driver, you, you, you get a lot of freedom. You have employment independence and you get to remain close to home. This is really important. Now, since DHL is a global company, you can move to nearly any part of the world. This is kind of cool. And now you, sp you do spend a sp significant amount of time driving. And you get to see many beautiful sites in your local community you might otherwise miss. You also get to meet a lot of people, customers, DHL customers, among others. And uh, so you, you will work in the, in the open air. And that's what we love. I mean, as a, as a delivery driver for DHL, you get the flexibility to plan your day. And you experience variety in each day. And you so you really, when you think about it, you never get bored. So this is kind of cool. Now, having said that, you need to know that if you are a DHL owner driver or a DHL del delivery driver, you do experience significant challenges throughout the day. So be be clear about the job. This It's not like a job, you're just chilling, whatever. You have to drive. You have to actually do a lot of things. But hey, listen, you need to uh, accommodate those challenges. First, you do, you'll have to find work that actually suits your schedule. If you're a delivery driver, if you're um, an owner driver, you get you get dispatched from uh, the main the main uh, I would say the, the main central board. That's how they call it at THL that the THL the DHL central board. So they sent you every day or every week, depending upon the agreement you sign up with that you sign with them. They'll send you a list of loads to haul, locations, the t the delivery times, and so on and so forth. And it's up to you to actually have the right strategy. 
the right tool, the right mapping tool, the right lane optimization tool, for example, to make sure that you are able to deliver all those loads on time, all the time. This is really important, not just one time, it has to be all the time. Thank you so much. I was just talking to you about how to become a DHL delivery driver as an independent contractor and make close to $130,000 a year. And as I gave you, I spoke to you about DHL owners versus uh, DHL owner drivers versus DHL express drivers. I spoke about DHL driver etiquette, how to sign up for DHL, how much do uh, DHL owner drivers make, and what it, what it really what's really like to be a DHL owner driver on a regular basis. Thank you. I will speak to you another time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.